We got it? Okay, may we stand and read together. When the hour came... God, you may be seated. Good morning. Good to see you this morning. Good to have have you here. It's good to be back off vacation. And I just told a lie in church. No. <laughs> I don't know about you. As I get older, I look forward to vacation. That's just thing about my old body, mind. Just needs a break every once in a while. In, in 1996, uh, I in June of 1996. I was appointed to Malden United Methodist Church, and after being there a few days, I was told of a situation that had developed. A young boy there by the name of Josh Lawless um, had been diagnosed with cancer, and it was not a very good kind of cancer, a very aggressive kind of cancer. Um, over the next weeks and months, I, I became very good friends with Josh and his mother and father, uh, Randy and Jackie, and his sisters, uh, Lindsay and Mallory and Whitney and spent a lot of time with them. Um, in October, they were pretty much told there was nothing else they could do, uh, that Josh was going to die. And in the third week in November, uh, he died. Uh, it was a sad funeral, uh, uh, a tough funeral. I spent 11 more years there and spent a lot of time with Jackie and, and Randy. Um, Jack, uh, uh, Randy um, went to a lot of football games with me. He was a big Carolina fan, so... Uh, I always invited him when I had a ticket to come and go with me. And then in June of, of 2007, I was appointed to Buncombe Street. And I'd been here about a week, and uh, Elaine told me I had this rather large package out there for me. So I went out and got it and began to unwrap it. And when I lifted it out of the box, it was a display case of a Carolina football signed by the, the football team in, in, in 1996 when Brad Scott was the head coach at South Carolina. I'd seen this ball before because it had been given to Josh when, uh, when he was very sick, that Brad Scott and the football team signed this ball for him. And Jackie and Randy had a note in there, and they said, Jerry, we don't know of anybody else that we want to have this football but you. If you come into my office there, um, if you're looking out the window there to the left, uh, this display, this football is there. I see it every day. And almost every time I look at it, it reminds me of Josh. It reminds me of, of Jackie and, and, and Randy, of Lindsay and Mallory and Whitney. It's, it's a very good visual reminder. And I'm glad that it's there. Because if it wasn't, being a human being, I, I might forget them. I just might forget them. About a week and a half ago at the children's conference, Bishop Holston was here. Our new bishop was here. And so he and his wife, Felicia, were back in my office. And they're big Georgia fans. And I'm hoping the first two weeks of football season is going to be miserable for them. <laughs> uh, he pointed to the ball and says, now what's that? And so I got to tell the story. You know, I think sometimes uh, in life uh, it's easy to forget those folks that probably have, have made an impact on our life. As time goes on, that, that we forget them. Sometimes it is good to have a visual reminder uh, of those persons. Jesus knows that his, 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 his time on earth is, is limited. He's having his last Passover meal with 
the disciples. And he knows that these old fishermen, like most of us, we are pretty forgetful. That with time, we, we just forget the impact uh, that, that people have made in our lives. We just do that. I bet some of us have it's been a long time since we thought about that teacher or that coach or that Sunday school teacher or preacher that made an impact on our life because we just don't see anything that reminds us of it. Jesus wanted to make sure that the church does not forget him. You know, it, it's so easy sometimes just to forget. And so he gave us some wonderful visual reminders so that we would not forget him. He said, do what? Take this bread and eat it. Drink from this cup in remembrance of me. In other words, don't forget me. Don't forget me. It's so important in our Christian life and our Christian walk and faith that we never forget Christ. And I thought about it this morning. You know, I'm a guy that preaches three things. What's three things that, that we should never forget about Jesus? First of all, I think that when we take communion, when we feel the bread, when we dip it into the cup and, and eat it, I think, first of all, we should never forget that he's our ultimate friend. He's our perfect friend, our true friend, our genuine friend. He is our unselfish forever friend. The friend that will never bail out on us. The friend who will always have our best interest in his heart. The friend who will always be there for us. Always willing to listen to whatever we have to say. The one thing I've, I've always loved about the good Lord is he's such a, a wonderful listener. You know, when we try to talk to people, they're always interrupting us. They're always trying to tell us how to fix our problem. They, they never let us finish. You know, you ever notice sometimes you don't ever get to finish what you're telling somebody? And the good thing about the Lord is he just lets us talk. He just lets us talk and he lets us finish. We get to say what's on our heart and in our mind. He, he never interrupts us. He, he's such a wonderful friend because he's such a good listener. He just listens to everything that we have to say. And he's so understanding. He's so sympathetic. You know, he, he knows what life is like. You know, he entered into human history. He lived upon this earth. He grew up in, in with his meager ways. He wasn't born into wealth. Basically, he was born into poverty. He knew what it was like to, to be rejected. He knew what it was like to be accused. He knew what it was like to... to to have people turn against you. He knew everything about life. And when we talk to him, he's, he's so understanding. You know, so understanding. And he always tells us the truth. You know, a, a good friend is somebody that will tell you the truth. Not, not tell you what you want to hear, but tell you the truth. Uh, I like that about the scripture. I like that about Jesus. He, he tells you the truth. And, and, and he's a, a, a faithful friend. You can always count on him. You can always trust in him. He, he'll always be there for you. He, when you have a problem, he'll be the first one that will arrive and he'll be the last one that will leave. You, you can't ask any better out of a friend than that. The first one to arrive and the last one to leave. Jesus is always such a, a wonderful and awesome friend. But, but because, because he's, he's so faithful in his friendship with us. You know, Jesus in that 15th chapter of John made it very clear to the disciples that, that he is their friend. And they are his friends. He made that very clear. So this morning when, when you take communion or any time when you take communion, when we hand you the bread and you touch it, may you remember that he is your ultimate friend. He is your unselfish friend forever. The one who, who will always be there for you. The first one to arrive and the last one to leave when you have a problem.
The next thing I, I think we should remember is, is that very obvious that he is our supreme sacrifice. Because of our situation, because we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and because the wages of sin is death, Jesus Christ came and took our place on the cross. He chose to die a cruel, painful, brutal, humiliating death so that you and I could have our sins forgiven. And we should never forget that. We should never forget that if it wasn't for the cross, if it wasn't for Christ's death upon the cross, there's no way that you and I could ever step one foot into eternity. Is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. He, he took our place. You see, his death was not an accidental death. Nor was his, his death an act of desperation on his part. His death was intentional. Jesus says, no one takes my life from me. Christ gives his life. And we should always remember that. You know, when, when we take the bread, when we eat the bread, remember that Christ intentionally died for you and me. A little girl asked her father one time, why do you have these uh, small pieces of flat metal in your pocket? And her daddy says, well, I was in World War II. And one day we were in a fierce battle, uh, soldiers dying all around me, and says, four of my best friends, we were in a foxhole together, and said, all of a sudden, a hand grenade rolled into our foxhole, and our friend Tom, without hesitation, leaped and placed his body over the hand grenade, and his, his body absorbed the explosion. And if, and if he hadn't have done that, there's a good chance that all of us would have died. He said, these are his dog tags. He says, I've always kept them in my pocket. Because I don't want to forget what Tom did. I don't want to forget what Tom did. He says, every time I feel them, I remember Tom. And so when, when you take communion, when you eat the bread, when you partake of the cup, always remember the one who gave his life so that we could have life and we could have it abundantly. And then lastly, I think when we take communion, we should also remember the great and precious promise that Jesus gave to us. I, I, I like that promise. I'm going to read it to you. It's, it's in the 14th chapter of John. Jesus says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. What a wonderful thing when we take communion to remember that Christ is coming back. That Jesus is going to return. And he's going to take us to live where he lives forever. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, just, just when you take communion, what a friend I, I have in Jesus. Uh, he, he, he gave the supreme sacrifice. And he's promised to come back and get me and all who believe. And carry us to heaven to live with him forever. Where there's no pain, where there's no sorrow, where there's no suffering. Where there's no hate, where there's no discrimination, where there's no bigotry. Where there's no poverty. You know, to, to go and live where he lives, what a wonderful thing. I, I do believe that Jesus is aware of us human beings and sometimes we can be forgetful. Sometimes we just need something to jog and trigger our memory about something in life. Sometimes we forget those people who've made an impact on our life. Those people who, who have had in some way sh helped shape and fashion who we are. Sometimes we need, just need something to help us remember. So when you take communion this morning, I want you to remember those, those three things. That Jesus is my best friend. I don't have a better friend than him. He'll be the first one there and the last one to leave when I have a problem. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. No greater love than a friend has to lay down his life for others. And he's, made, and he's given me a wonderful promise. That one day I, I get to live in a place where there's no pain, no suffering, no disease, no dying. No hatred, no bigotry, 
no poverty, no war. I get to live there, and I get to live there forever. And I don't ever want to forget those three things. I don't want to forget that he's my friend, he's my sacrifice, and he's my hope. Don't want to forget those three things. Amen.